Hi, and welcome to Tony's Cool Tools. Today we got a special guest. Um, I don't know about special. Well, special. <laughs> Short bus, you know, window liquor special? <laughs> but I'm going to show him how I can save him thousands of dollars today. I'm all in. Yep. I, I, I know. I know. The guy who doesn't want to break out his communion money. <laughs> Today we have to take Chris's tractor to get it serviced. I'm going to show you all different types of ways to attach your tractor to your trailer. So we're going to start with the least expensive but the most popular and that is just the standard 2 inch strap. 27 or 25 inch long. These are as you can see 3333 working load with a 10,000 pound braking strength on this uh, on this ratchet strap. And they're not they're, expensive. They're not expensive. You can actually get them on Black Friday for under 10 bucks. So I usually keep about a dozen of these on hand because they do wear out. And I do use carpet on the edges as best, but inevitably they do fray. All right, the next one we're gonna cover is called the lever load binder. These are the most popular. They come in all different sizes. I have a multitude of accessories that I use them on. This one I have for a, um, a rake that I use, and this goes on a quarter inch chain. Same thing, it's just a lever, level, lever type binder. This one here is for quarter inch chain same thing they're very popular inexpensive but they're also called knuckle busters and there's a good reason why and that is this is a very short short handle on this so when you're trying to push it sometimes and you got too much tension it pops back wraps you in knuckle is that how you got that oh <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't tell anyone but a lot of people use what's called a cheater bar on that. That is a pipe that you put on here to give you more leverage. They don't recommend it. They tell you not to use it. Everyone does. You check out the truckers, they all do it. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the next size up. This one is used for the tractors or heavy, heavy equipment. See the 3 8 or 5 16 chain that we're using in here. As you can tell, I got this at a garage sale or a farm sale or whatever. This particular one is a USA made product, which I'm glad I got. There's a lot of Chinese, but these, all these are very inexpensive. You can pick them up anywhere, especially like these for hauling equipment from about $25 up to about $50 for the US, $60 for the USA made ones. Though we're talking about this now, we're going to show this in actual use on your trailer when we hook it up. My trailer? I like the sound of that. You know what? <laughs> that was a Freudian slip right there. <laughs> on a trailer, let's put it that way. So let's say your trailer. Oh, okay. <laughs> Do I have to get the title when I talk to you? I don't need no stinking title. Oh, okay. <laughs> the next one we're going to cover is the quick ratchet binder. And these are very nice in that these are opposing threads here so that they tighten up as you're, as you're either opening them or closing them. And there's a little ratchet pawl right over here that depending goes only one way, flip that, goes the other way. So it's now, basically a, a turnbuckle. It is. Now you can set that slightly. It's hard on these, but you can set it in a neutral position. Mm -hmm. And that allows you to do what then? Now you can twist this without having that. Right, makes it easier to turn. It makes it easier to turn, yes. All right, Chris, one of the things you have to do before you can use these, and I'm gonna use this as an example, is I'm hooking that up, is I have to undo these so that these are much further out so that when I'm tightening them, I'm pulling everything in. Yeah, working so, space, basically. Right? Exactly. So now, as you can see, I gotta figure out which way, yep. and that's the right way. So now, I'm gonna try to get it in that neutral position and do that. Mm -hmm. Spins much easier. Spins much easier. Them. Now, I don't recommend this method, but I use it a lot because it's really fast. You gotta have longer arms, and you just, Now you see, it, it just clicked, so. Yeah. Mm 
How many times have you hit yourself? Well, when I first started, <laughs> quite a few. And you got to watch your chin, yeah. never in front of you. That's how come I say you got to have longer arms. Right. But when you have your truck, you can typically, or your trailer, you could hook this onto the rub rail and hang onto it and undo it. Mm -hmm. These are super, super nice. However, this arm sometimes, because it's stationary, it's in the way, close to a tire, close to a fender. So it gets to be a pain sometimes to undo or tighten or loosen. All of these you can pick up at a farm and ranch store typically or online on Amazon. Now the next one is my most favorite. This is the Peerless Quick Ratchet. And the nice thing about this one here, I'm gonna flip it around so you can see. One thing is it has foldable arms, which is extremely nice when you're finished. When you finish ratcheting it, this clicks over, you take your chain and wrap it all the way around this arm. The other thing that's way, way cool about this one is there's three positions. There's a take up, an extension, and then there's a neutral. And the nice thing about the neutral is that you can free spin this. You put that on, you can free spin this. Real easily. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. And not only that, it has a nice rubber grip on here. All this is metal. You're freezing your hands off typically, like today we're gonna be freezing our butt off, but <laughs> that is nice to have that on there. And I know, like a lot of guys, you wear gloves often, but that's, when you gotta do the fine switching of things, that's it. you take your gloves off and then- You have to, you get your cold hands. And you only got so much time. That's it. And, yep. Now this particular one is good for either 5 16 or 3 8 chain. But this is the next thing I wanna talk about. Not necessarily this brand, but what this is. This is an axle sling. And what I use this for is, most of the tractors, the front end, have no place to hook a chain up on. You can put it across the bucket. People have done way crazy things. But with this, I hook this around the axle and we'll show this in operation. We put this around the front axle and since we're doing the tractor, we're doing four points of contact. So on, in the front, we'll have two of these. These are also the same thing like this. 33, 33 as far as the amount of um, uh, the weight that it holds. So on the front you have two of these, 33, 33, one on each side. And it has nice, nice uh, D-rings on here. Now you can take your chain and hook right to it. And making it easy and simple to tie down your tractor in the front to your D-rings that are on the trailer. And Chris, as I pointed out, all the items here, we're gonna show it in a few minutes here when we hook up your tractor to the trailer. The last thing I wanna talk about is chains. Though I like using all of these and they all have their purpose, chains is what I like when I do heavy equipment like the tractor or skid steers or anything like that. This happens to be a grade 70 chain. Uh, they also make a grade 80, but this is what's recommended for heavy equipment. Um, I get these from Harbor Freight. They're, they're on sale. You can buy them for under $50. And this one is the 5 16 They also come in 3 8 So when you're looking at any of these, it works perfectly in there. All right, let's go move your tractor. On my trailer? <laughs> On a trailer. <laughs> All right, let's get this baby down. So now your trailer has got the built-in ramps. Yes, it is built the... in so that it doesn't, I don't have to worry about it lifting the back of my truck right. up, right. which is nice. And, and it has a spring, spring assist. Mm -hmm. So you don't kill yourself. Exactly. And, oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's real nice. Not too shabby for a $100 trailer. Earlier I mentioned that I'm gonna save people thousands of dollars on their trailer. 
And I'll tell you how right now. Find somebody else that has one. That's what I did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's good to go. We can. So am I backing in? What do you want me to do? How no, do you, pull it in forward. And you know you got it marked, so you know where you got to go. Nope, nope. Anything? We're going to take a look because every tractor is a little different. Okay. Yours weighs more than mine. Yeah, of course it does. All the way down. Perfect. All right. And put the parking brake on. Yep, you got both of them? Yeah, they're locked. Okay. Anything else? That's it. Yeah, I try to center it. So that when you look at the trailer and the truck, they look pretty, pretty level. All right, Chris, as you know, we went through all the specs on this earlier. So now we're going to hook up the tractor. This is not a tutorial. I'm just showing the way I do it. Right, wrong or indifferent. This is the way I have it. Hopefully I get your tractor in the in the dealer in one piece. I do too. I want it to not be upside down on the highway when I come tomorrow. But you do have insurance, so hopefully <laughs> yes, that we won't insured. have to use it. It's all so insured. let's start out with the most easiest one that's there are that people have, and that's the two inch strap that we covered. And that is it as you can see, this is a brand new strap. It's ten thousand braking and thirty-three thirty-three as far as the working weight on it. So I prefer using chains when I'm doing a tractor. Um, my UTV or ATVs, I use these two inches. And I always, always buy extra of these when Fleet Farm or when the farm and ranch store are having them. They have them on sale sometimes Black Friday for six, seven dollars. So I'll have a dozen of these sitting there brand new because they do wear out. Sometimes I hit a pinch point, but that's why I use remnant carpets. Yep. And once again, I prefer chains when I'm doing this. So that's that. I like both. I like both. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as we said, these, this is what I started out with. And they're le the lever binders. Yep. They're good, but they're knuckle busters. And the other thing is, as you can see, it's a rounded over here. You need a pipe. You need a cheater bar a lot of times to tighten these up. They're not easy to attach and we'll show you one of these in a second. The next one that I went to is I bought these and I thought much better than this one here. Mm -hmm. And they're nice, but they can only go one way or the other, which is good, but it's a pain to use these two. They are great and everyone has them. These are about, you can get these anywhere from 25 to about 40 bucks or so. This style. And yeah, these, depending that they're mostly Chinese. The American ones are very expensive, but you know, once again, we covered the pricing on this earlier. This is by far my favorite right here. And the reason is it has the retractable arm here, but the best part is this part right here, and that's the free spool. Oh. So now it moves back and so forth. You can, just crank it to you can, it you can like, tighten it up very quickly and like we'll show you here. Yeah. Yep. The issue that I have with it, with most of the trailer manufacturers, there's nowhere on here that is a point that you can hook on the tractor as far as chains or binders or anything. So you have to think, how, you, how am I going to do this now? And I've come up with a couple of different ways on the Coyote tractor. And we'll show you that here in a second. But I know there's guys that are welding plates to the front of this here that you can are, are points that you can hook onto. But this is, we talked about this earlier, these are the axle holders, or you put these around your axle here, and this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna put these around here, 
and then we're going to hook them up. They come with D-rings there and you can put the chain through it or we're just going to put the hook on there and then attach it to the D-ring here. Sure. I like using the 5 16 chain here. Now I purchased this at Harbor Freight when they were on Black Friday or whatever. These are pretty good. I use these bags to hold them because these plastic bags just tear apart. Especially when they're cold. Exactly. What does grade 70 mean? Um, it's a, they make grade 70 and grade 80. They're for tying down equipment. You can't use some of the cheaper chains that are out there. These are grade 70 and they're marked right on here. Right. And the 5 16 are right. real nice size chains for so Either 5 16 or 3 8 It'll do 99% of what most yep. guys ever need, right? And this here can either do 5 16 or 3 8 on okay. here. Okay. So if I'm going a short distance, what I do is I take the chain and instead of using four, four points of contact, I run it through here. I just use a rod, push the chain through, and attach it to the two D-rings. All right, Chris, we're gonna hook it up here. I grab these here, and I just put that on there. Now, all I do is use my, I've already expanded this too because a lot of times when you're doing it, they compress. So these screws have been expanded all the way. So you've got some room for tightening. Exactly. Like we were just talking before the camera's right in there, this isn't necessarily the only way or necessarily the best way, but it does work for you. That's it. It works for me. And this is doing a little play. This is where that free spool really pays off. I get it as tight as I can, I free spool it, and then just, oh, I can get a little bit tighter maybe, one more, yeah. And cost-wise, how much are these versus the other ones? I don't think you mentioned that. Uh, these are about $70, well, we covered it earlier. Oh, these oh are okay, about, I wasn't there earlier, yeah. that's why. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because guys are probably asking again anyways. Oh, so no, it's not even ratcheting. It just spins nice. It spins yep. real nice. And we're yep. already getting tight, tight here. Tight. Once I get tight, I click that to the in position. And over here, if you come over here on this side, you can see the sticker is on it since these are still new. In and out. Oh, yeah. So you're not gonna go super tight because it's your first one, right? Right, this is the first one. I'm getting it just a little tight. So the next are you gonna go to a back? Yeah. And yep. then the other side front and then the other side back. Exactly, right? yep. Okay. See, I'm not as dumb as I look. Well, there's a matter of opinion on that one. <laughs> Let's get another set of chains here. Grab both of these, head on back. Now, I had gotten this clevis. That's very pretty. It is. I like that. And it just goes right on there. And we just tighten that up. And you're gonna put two on, one on each side of this? Nope. Just the one? Just the one. And we'll slide the chains right through it. And do this one over here. Actually, since we got that one, we'll do that side first. Yep. I was thinking you might want to go opposite side. Yep. Although it probably wouldn't matter until you tighten it up anyway. That's it. And we tighten it up gradually.
put that on please for. There we go. Isn't it nice hanging on the nice cold metal on a cold Oh day? yeah. Well, <laughs> that's why I like this vinyl that they yeah. put on here. And boy, does that get it nice and tight. Yep. And then I just put it, put it in the drive. Yep. Now, so we got two points right here. Now we just do the same thing on the other two. So we have our little rub strap right there. I'm gonna take the hook, just hook that up. We're gonna take this here, hook it up to Put that to neutral or free spool. Sure, I have enough. No, oh, I need to go up a little more. Okay. One thing I will mention, oh, the other nice thing about these is because this is retractable right here, unlike that one, which we'll show just in a minute, you don't have a lot of control or you don't have a lot of room in here. With this one, I can move it over to the side and still crank it. So that's the, the nice thing about this. Okay, we're getting tension there. The other thing I wanted to talk about is if I was only using one chain here and set it through, I would always put the binder on this side, on the passenger side. Because if you ever have to stop in highway traffic, you always want to work on this side, not on that side. You are, now, you are smarter than you look. <laughs> <laughs> now we do have four points here, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But if I was only using the two, always put your uh, strap or your ratcheting portion on this side. I've seen guys where they just have one chain across front and back. And really, if it breaks loose, you're, you're, all, you're, you're hurting because you only got one chain on basically. Exactly. Right? Now we're gonna go do the last one. And we're gonna use the old style one that I've used. But not the old, old style. Not the old, old style, but the new, old, new style. old style. Unlike the Peerless variety of ratchet straps, this one here, I can't free spool. I gotta get these all the way out. The way I found is the easiest, but you gotta be very careful so you don't knock yourself out, is to hold it like this and just go backwards like this. So believe me, I learned, because I've whacked myself with it. Now, that being said, we're gonna go ahead and attach this. And the same to this one. There you go. I think we got it. Risk it tired. <laughs> What's that? Risk it tired. That's it. Now you're getting tight. Good and tight? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The other thing with this one is, you have to put a lot of pressure on these, otherwise they don't spin. Now 
Now good. you see why you like the it's so nice with the other one. I have these. They both work, don't get me wrong. And this is less expensive. This is probably, as we said, around 35 or 40 if you would get the Chinese version. Now, with all of them, we're gonna do the same thing with this. And that is, we're going to, this one, as you can see, the nice thing is it won't unravel. But with these, we just move the chain around. Now we're going to have to tighten that one up a little bit, but I just wanted to show. So you I'm going to tighten this one up. Don't pop my tires. Now, field attention on that one. Yep. So, and this, the nice thing is, you flip that over and do the same thing here. So you don't have chains dragging. I mean, sparklers? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we'll do... Same up here. That's good. What about the other side? Yep, we got the other two, yeah. You gotta tighten that one yeah, too. Yeah, I gotta. This one is pretty tight. Well, you got all three fighting it now, so yeah. Yeah, that's pretty tight. Or as they say in Germany, guten tight. Well, when you get it guten tight, you go into your garage. Uh huh. And you lock your garage, and you know what you use? No. The garage key. The garage key. <laughs> oh my. Is that one of your Polish ones? Yes, it is. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's really making her squat. Oh yeah. You definitely can see the whole track. Yep. Squat. That's it. Now we know those are all, we've got four points of contact. So we're Basically, I believe in Wisconsin legal. Well, next, put up your back. That's it. We'll put my tail up. thing about this one here is you have this little pin that way I don't have to worry about it falling on me I'm ready to go we will check our lights Make sure everything works. What about the wheel chocks? Can you put those on or no? No, no. <laughs> those where I was just pointing out that I use wheel chocks when I'm loading or unloading sometimes if I'm on a if I'm on an incline sure. or Might downhill. If you were by yourself on your own trailer with your own tractor, you know exactly where to go and you would set them so you just know when to stop when you well, pull the, on. Uh, the problem with those is they would vibrate off if oh, I left them yeah. on, so I don't. In the past, what I had was I put a two by four across here and I screwed those down and I knew when I came in, I just pulled the tractor up to the two by four and like ready a, to go. Like a snowmobile trailer, they know Same the thing, they know exactly where to go. So now we've got all four points set up, we're ready to trailer. Now, if it wasn't that we were filming, it'd probably take us about 15 minutes to do this. Yep. 
Yeah. You got a whole bunch of dirt right there. No. You had it on your hand. It's on your bottom lip now. No. Now you just wiped it on the bottom of your nose. Oh. <laughs> We're still running. You can edit that out. <laughs> okay, now you're good. Okay. Now you look pretty again. Well. As pretty as can be. <laughs> Guess what I got to say about that. Oh. Keep that on film. <laughs> <laughs> Trailer is secure. We're ready to head on our way. Well, I hope you found this informative and entertaining. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. And remember, pass it forward. Make the world a better place. And don't be a tool. Watch Tony's Cool Tools. Until I see you next time.